Welcome back to round three of Genetics with Mrs. Klein. The topic of this video is multiple alleles, also known as, in this case, blood typing. Multiple alleles are yet another variation on Mendel's law of dominance. In this case, we've seen so far how genes have two alleles, for example, a red and a white allele, or a short and a tall allele, but sometimes it's not that simple and we have multiple alleles for a specific gene, meaning more than two versions of a specific gene. The example of multiple alleles that we will be setting is blood type in humans. In humans, there are three different alleles for blood type, the A allele, the B allele, and the O allele. In this case, the A and B alleles are co-dominant to each other, and O is recessive. So the presence of an A allele or a B allele will cover up or mask the presence of an O allele. The chart shown here summarizes the genotypes and phenotypes for human blood type. So for example, let's start at the top. Someone could have two A alleles, so homozygous big A, big A, and that would give them type A blood. A person could also have an A and an O allele, but since A is dominant to O, that would mean they would still have type A blood. If we continue down, a person could have an A allele and a B allele. And since A and B are both dominant, they're co-dominant, that person would have type AB blood. A person could also have one B allele and one O allele. And again, since B is dominant over O, that person would have type B blood. A person could also have two B alleles, which would give them type B blood again. And last but not least, a person could inherit two O alleles. Since O is recessive, when we get two O alleles, that person will have type O blood. I realize there's also positive and negative in blood type, but we will not be talking about that for the purpose of this video. Let's complete a few examples together. Now, I will say these examples are not in your packet, but they will definitely help you be able to complete the ones that are in your packet. I would recommend writing these down on a separate sheet of paper and working them with me as a way to practice. So, our first cross run across an individual with type A blood who's homozygous with an individual with type B blood who's heterozygous. So we would set that up like this. So type A homozygous would be A and A. And type B heterozygous would be B. Remember heterozygous means two different. So in this case that would mean the recessive allele which is O. We fill in our Punnett square like so. And we always put A first. Not really sure why, we just do. So in this case, our genotypes will be type A, B, two out of four, and type A, O, which is two out of four. For our phenotypes, they will have one possibility is type AB blood, and that's two out of four. The other possibility will be just type A blood, because remember that A is dominant over O. So type AB, A blood would be two out of four as well. Let's try a second example together. In this case, we're going to cross an individual with type AB blood with an individual with type O blood. Remembering that A and B are co-dominant, and O is recessive. So in order to have O blood, a person has two O alleles. So in this box, we'll get A and O. Same thing here. In this box, we'll get B and O, and the same thing here. So for our genotypes, one possibility is A and O, two out of four. Another possibility is B and O also two out of four. For our phenotypes, remember that A is dominant to O, so this person would have type A blood, two out of four, and this person would have type B blood. Again, also two out of four. Let's try one more example together. Let's cross a person with type AB blood with a person who has type A blood, but is heterozygous for that. So here is type AB blood. And remember, heterozygous means two different. 
they have type A. So we know they have an A allele. And since they are heterozygous, the other allele will be O, because again, A is dominant to O. So in this box, we will have A and A. This box will have A and B. This box will have A and O. And here we'll have B and O. So in this case, we actually have four different genotypes. A, A, one out of four. A, O, one out of four. A, B, one out of four. And B, O, one out of four. Let's put this into our phenotypes. Now, if we look here, these two individuals will both have type A blood homozygous and heterozygous, because again, A is dominant to O. So we will have for type A blood, for that phenotype, two out of four. We have a possibility for type AB blood, that's one out of four. And we also have a possibility for type B blood, because again, the B is dominant over the O. And that will be one out of four. You might be wondering, why is blood type important? The answer is that if someone's in a serious accident or requires a blood donation, having a donor of the same or similar type is critical. If someone gets the incorrect type of blood, it can result in death. We'll look at how blood transfusions work in more detail in the next upcoming days. It's time to practice. Complete the questions on page 19 and 20, and then check your answers.